Hi guys, today I wanted to show you how I use my Cricut Joy to make die cut stickers for my shop. If you know anything about the Cricut Joy, you might know that it does not have a print and cut function, which can make cutting things like sticker designs really difficult. But uh, there's a certain workaround that I figured out through a lot of trial and error that you can use to make very nice, very cute stickers. So let's get right into it. Today I'll actually be making the artwork digitally. Most of the time I'm usually painting traditionally with gouache or maybe acrylic gouache and then I scan it and clean it up digitally and then I make stickers from that. But today we're just going to start digital on Fire Alpaca. So I'm going to start off with my sketch and then do some line art, do all the coloring. I have my reference image right there. This was my favorite cork design. Uh, so I just really wanted to slap him on my switch case. So that's how we ended up choosing this design for today's sticker. So I'm actually using the default watercolor brush that comes with Fire Alpaca for my line art today. I found that I really enjoy like a softer look to my line art when I make these types of stickers digitally. I guess just now that I'm so used to painting traditionally, I don't like that really crisp sort of artificial look in my own art. Of course, other people, if they do it, then usually it looks very good, but I, I like the sort of, again, the softer look and the variation in uh, depth and tone that you can get with the watercolor brush here. I do end up duplicating the line art layer just to make it slightly darker, uh, but yeah, that's what I went with today. So now I'm just laying down the base color. I actually use the color picker tool to make sure that I stay relatively close to the palette in the reference image and the source material. But I do later on go and adjust the colors myself. And you'll also notice uh, because the watercolor brush does blend with colors underneath it, if I'm on the same layer and doing one color on top of another, I will often use the color picker tool and then go change it to something a, a little different, maybe a little lighter, a little darker, depending on what I need, maybe up the saturation or decrease the saturation and what have you. So I'm sort of just like getting an idea for what I want with the color picker tool, but then I'm changing it to what I need. Then I've gone on and added some shadows, lightening things, darkening things, uh, however I think it fits. This reference image is a little tricky to follow because there's such dynamic lighting and different like amounts of shadows plus the color of the Korok is sort of like tree bark where it has like blotches of darker colors and lighter colors. So I just rolled with it. I just did whatever I thought looked nice and uh, that's how we got uh, what we got. The little leaf part with the face uh, definitely took the longest amount of time. Uh, what I was trying to be aware of is that when you print something like this as a sticker, it's going to be much smaller. So you need to make sure that any details are actually going to be readable. So there's a couple things that I need to consider when I do this. One, any lines uh, or shapes that are too small are just gonna sort of blend in. You're not gonna be able to see them. So I need to make sure that even if we have really fine lines on the reference image, I need to make them a little bit thicker so that you can actually see them once it's printed small. In addition to that, any sort of color variation needs to be noticeable once printed. So if you have two colors that are really similar together and digitally I can see the difference just fine, I'm going to actually have to up the contrast or make one darker and one lighter to make sure that when I print it, they're actually gonna be readable. So uh, usually there's not quite as much contrast when I print out. And that depends on your printer and your settings and also your, like what paper you use and everything like that. So that really just takes trial and error. But uh, with this, I just made sure I had the most important details standing out enough to be seen even at a very small size.
So now that I'm pretty happy with my artwork, the next thing I need to do is actually save it as a transparent PNG file so that there's no background or anything. Then I'm actually going to adjust the colors a bit. I'm going to lighten them because I know that once I print it onto my glossy sticker paper, it's actually going to be quite a bit darker than how I see it on my screen. So I'll just go to the filter tool and then adjust the levels until it's lighter, but also I'm going to up the contrast a bit as well because like I said, my printer tends to sort of blur things together if there's not enough contrast. Now we need to make our white border or offset so that we can make sure that our design does not get cut into if there's any sort of alignment mistakes, which for the Cricut Joy, since there isn't a print and cut function, we have to make kind of extra large borders just in case there's some error because, I mean, you're pretty much guaranteed to have a, a little bit uh, of an off cut. So in order to make sure that we don't cut into our design. We're gonna make a pretty large border. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky and this is where it took the most trial and error for me because I looked up so many different tutorials and videos, blog posts, whatever, trying to figure out the best method to accurately cut my stickers on a machine that cannot read registration marks. And honestly, none of those blog posts or videos or anything worked perfectly for me. A lot of people said that you need to draw a black border using the pen tool, like the, the little pens you can get to write on cards and stuff that you can put right into the place where the, the blade is on your machine and draw a box directly onto the mat. It did not work for me. I got ink on my paper. Every time I tried to smooth it out, it just was not working. So finally, I had an epiphany. I thought, why don't I just make a black border when I print it? Like, just, just make the image with a black border. Like, why not? So that's what I ended up doing. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. The biggest thing that I discovered is that I just cannot get it to cut multiple images accurately. If I try to cut three stickers at one time, only one sticker is ever going to cut accurately, which is stupid, but that's just how it is. So now I just do my die cuts one at a time. If I figure out a better method to do multiple ones at once, then I will definitely let you know, but I have not found that yet. So what I decided to do was just make a three by four inch canvas. So if I go on fire alpaca here, of course you don't need to use fire alpaca, but this is generally the same for anything. All you need to do is make sure you have inches set. You could use centimeters, but I go four by three. So I think that's the best option for me. Uh, so width is four, height is three. All right, you wanna click okay. And that is our canvas here. So the next thing you have to do is create a border. Doesn't matter what size really, as long as you have enough room for your sticker in the end. And it doesn't even need to be perfect because what the software does is it basically only counts from like the outside of your image, the distance between different parts of your cut file. So as long as uh, we have something around our, uh, our design, then it should technically cut accurately as long as we line up the edges properly on our map, which I will talk about in a moment. So all I did was take the selection tool. This is just a box. And then I'm going to click select and inverse. Then we'll take the fill tool. I'm just using black here. You can use any color, but if it is too light, then the software actually won't pick it up. I don't know why it chooses not to cut something too light, but that's just what happened to me. So I'm just gonna choose black and fill it in. I'm gonna deselect and we have our border. It is not perfect uh, and that's all right. So generally speaking, every time, I use the same uh, 
one PNG file. It's, I save it as a transparent PNG, and then I can just copy and paste my sticker designs inside. For example, if I want to, I'll show you, I guess I'll show you uh, how I usually do things, right? So I'm gonna open up some image that I've already cleaned up or scanned or whatever. So maybe we'll say, uh, what about Desmond? Let's do Desmond Duck, right? Desmond Duck PNG. This one is not the cleanest actually around. I had to clean it up later, so maybe this won't work out, but you have to make sure there's no background and even one pixel might mess it up. So we'll see what that looks like here. We wanna use transform, which is control T, or you can find it up here on the toolbar and just make it fit in, keeping in mind that you're gonna have quite a big border and then press enter. And we have our little Desmond here, Desmond the duck. We wanna select and then inverse again. And I made the mistake of not changing it. This should be active layer, not canvas. So let's deselect and then try again. Right now it's around everything. Otherwise it'll also go around the black box, which we don't want because that'll make our uh, outline a little weird. So we want to inverse that. You can see some pixels here. So I'm going to show you what happens when it's not perfectly clean. We want to expand. I usually go for 50 once it's a small size. Round the corner and look what happened here. You can see it's not perfect. So if I go ahead to my fill tool, I'll make a new layer and put it beneath that. I fill it. Let's deselect. And now I'm going to just show you with the black what it's going to look like in the end. That's not very pretty. Yeah, so we have to be extra careful. So let me actually get rid of this because I do have a cleaner image. Let's actually get our Korok here. So let's do Korok PNG. Again, this was saved uh, with a transparent background. So I'm going to click select all. So control A and then control C. Control V to paste it in, Control T to transform. And this time, because he's a little tall, we're gonna move him to the side. Like that, we're gonna just turn him about 90 degrees. It doesn't need to be perfect, actually. And let's make him fit in. Again, keeping in mind there's gonna be a border, like so. Enter. And then we're gonna do the same little thing select inverse expand 50 look at the uh, make a new layer use our white and the fill bucket it's on active layer not canvas if we deselect it and i show you the black that's much cleaner so that would be our final image make sure when you save it you click save as if you're using your template and then we'll say Korok sticker 2 because I already have already. You can save it as a fire alpaca file but in the end we need a PNG so we'll save. Layers cannot be saved. Okay that means we need transparent PNG. So the next time we open it if we want to close this and open recent file there is no background. And this is very important, as I'll show you in a bit, because this outline is what the Cricut software uses to make a cut. Let's open Cricut Design Space and click New Project. Usually the next thing I do is upload my PNG image into a new project on Cricut Design Space, just to make sure that it's gonna cut properly and that I have my dimensions correct before I go and print it. Here I'm choosing complex image, and I will also just choose cut image. There's no point in doing print and cut because you can't do it on the Cricut Joy. I'm going to select the image, add it to my canvas, then make sure you change the width and the height. So it's locked, I'm just changing the width to four, making sure the height is three. You don't actually need to drag it to the corner, but I do anyway. So it looks good, which means I'm going back to Fire Alpaca. Now I'm going to print, making sure 
that I printed, instead of fit to paper, use image resolution. So it's the actual size that I want it. Make sure my paper is correct, my size is correct. I'm using uh, the large size, that's a Japanese size, and we're gonna print it. Here's what he looks like, I'll print it out. Next thing I have to do is just cut around the border and put him on the mat. The most important part of this entire process is to cut accurately. So I use a pair of scissors because if the angle's wrong with my paper cutter, it can just mess up the entire thing. What you need to make sure you do is you need to line it up with the tiny little lines, uh, about a millimeter, I think, not to the very edge of the border. Otherwise, it will be off. I don't know why you can't put it to the very edge and you have to do it to those little millimeter lines. I don't know, but this is the only way I can make it work. Hopefully you can see in this picture exactly what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, this is only on the centimeter side. I don't know why they don't have these little lines on the inch side. So it means that my mat does get less sticky more quickly because I'm constantly using the same corner. But you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, you need to get it aligned. If it's not aligned properly, then you've just ruined everything. So this is the most important part. Do not forget it and be very careful. The next thing you need to do is click make it and then click continue. You then have to select your blade settings. So that requires choosing a material. I did a lot of testing. I found out what works for my particular paper, but you really just need to test whatever materials you're using. So for now I have it at a certain pressure. I choose less, but I can't tell you what you need to do. You really should just test it out with your own paper. Then I just need to load my mat. So pretty easy, it's just automatic. Put it in, it sucks it in, make sure it's straight, and then you're good to go. Just turn back to Cricut Design Space, wait till it registers that it's all loaded in. Then you just have to click go. The most important thing is click cancel because you don't actually want it to cut the border. It will cut the inside design first and then it will cut the border. So just make sure you click cancel straight away and as soon as you see that it's finished cutting your sticker, click yes. Yes, I want to stop it. As you can see here, it gets to 100%. I'm watching my machine and as soon as I see it's gone all the way around the sticker, I click yes. It brings me back to this screen and I've got a sticker without the border having been cut out. So it looks like this uh, from another angle, me holding my phone. I see it's finished in just a second. There we go. Then I immediately click yes so that it stops and it unloads it. This is our result. All we have to do is peel it off the mat. It's difficult with one hand. <laughs> then I'm gonna bend the mat a bit so I don't bend the sticker. And here we go, here's our little Korok sticker. Isn't he cute? Look at him. I think it came out pretty nice. And here's also a picture of just the PNG image so you can see the artwork more clearly. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If not helpful, at least a little bit entertaining. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. I will try my best to answer them. I'm not saying I'm a complete expert on how to do this. Uh, I'm just sharing what I've learned and I haven't seen anything similar to my method. So I just thought maybe this would help someone. So yeah, let me know if you liked it. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you did. And maybe subscribe if you want to see anything similar in the future. Or if you like art and painting and things like that. 
Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.